So good evening, everyone. Uh, we received the apologies from Councillor Christine May, and it's been agreed that Councillor Babatola will be chairing the meeting tonight. Thank you. You must. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, can I just say uh, Happy New Year to everybody? You are all welcome back to this uh, frozen condition as we speak, and thank you all for coming. Thank you, panel, for for coming. Um, as um, the clerk have said, I'll be chairing this meeting just for today. And then I will be passing all the information here to the chair. Uh, during this meeting, all participants, you have control of your microphone. So please turn it on when you want to speak and turn it off when you finish. Also, can I remind all of us that uh, our devices can be put on silent. Uh, all reports as part of this agenda is being considered as read. And can I just remind you that if you just, if you have a question to the officers, please be specific and go straight to the point. At the same time, I want to inform you all that, well, I don't think we have any uh, 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 audience here at the moment that this is being recorded and it's going to be put on the uh, council uh, YouTube channel. So we've received apologies from the chair, as uh, the clerk have said, and uh, Councillor Sam Littlewood. Are there any other apologies? Okay. Can I ask members to declare if they have any interest on the matters on the agenda. Uh, I see none. Yes. Um, I haven't received any other urgent uh, business. No? No? Can I ask that members, although I was present at the last meeting and I've read it, can I ask members to confirm it's an accurate reflection of what was uh, discuss. Is that agreed? On your behalf and on, on uh, Christine May's, the chair's behalf, can I sign the, yeah, the minutes? Thank you. So on the benefit of the uh, member just coming in, can I just say that uh, Christy May has given our apologies and other panel members have asked me to chair the meetings today. Are you happy with that? Thank you. Uh, item number five on the agenda is a uh, Street service performance to be presented by Kate. Uh, please advise us on what we are expecting from you. And if members have got questions, please be ready to answer. Thank you. The floor is yours. Thanks very much, Chair. Good evening, everyone. Um, before I uh, give a very brief introduction to the report, I'd just like to introduce colleagues that are joining me this evening. So we have Joe Oliver, who's the Head of Street Services, and Ollie Tang, who's the Head of Fleet and Waste Strategy. And also in the, in the front row, uh, Lee Worms, Assistant, um, Assistant Manager of Street Services, and Sati Hare, um, Envira Crime Manager as well. So uh, we, we cover all bases, hopefully, between us this evening. Um, so, um, as you said, Chair, we'll happily take your questions once I, I've given the introduction. Um, hopefully you'll agree that it's a full report that, that covers all of the areas of, of, of activity that the, the, the team are responsible for. But I think it's probably really important just to sort of bring to your attention some of the, 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 the key headlines from that report um, that are for the period November 2022 to October uh, 2023. So I think the first thing to acknowledge is it's been a big year operationally for street services with the introduction of three key policies under the Towards Zero Waste programme. 
and these were the introduction of the contamination policy in November 2022, uh, quickly followed by um, the, the move to fortnightly residual waste collection from weekly and also the side waste policy in February 2023. So obviously there's been a lot of change within the service, but also there's been a lot of change for our, our residents um, uh, as well. So uh, and as is always the case with change, inevitably, um, you know, and also a change that affects every household in the borough as well of, of circa 124,000 properties. Inevitably, there'll be some teething issues. Um, however, on the whole, I think we're generally very pleased with, with the performance of, of, of um, you know, the leadership team and our colleagues on the ground that are delivering the services day to day. So, but that said, we continue to engage um, with our residents, with our businesses, with other stakeholders, and of course, ward councillors who have a real grip of what's going on in their neighbourhoods to make sure that we improve services wherever we can. Um, because we know it's a, um, particularly, you know, the, the public realm and having your waste collected is, is really important to everybody. So we're under no illusions that we're high profile and under sort of scrutiny every single day, not just within environments like this. So if I can, um, it, obviously the, the things that we've generally had to contend with during the year um, in terms of member casework and complaints from the public have related to miscollections and general cleanliness and fly tipping in respect of street cleansing. They, that probably won't come as a surprise to you because um, it, they're often things that we have to contend with. Um, but also importantly, the, the data that we're receiving is that the change, um, particularly to the, uh, with the three policies, is that the um, impact on the borough's recycling rates, which had previously experienced a decline. But um, in quarter one, we've seen a 5% increase um, when compared to the same period in 21-22. I'm also pleased to say that quarter two is also showing indications of, of a similar positive trajectory, which is, is really pleasing. Um, to, to everybody involved and I'm sure to, to councillors that, that made the decision as well. So not only that, but the changes have reduced the levels of contamination in the dry mixed recycling stream and also overall waste generation has decreased in 2022-23, um, circa 59 kilogram reduction of waste per household per annum since the previous year. Also, uh, during the year, um, we were able to improve cleansing standards in town centres, shopping parades and main thoroughfares, securing additional resources to jet wash the three town centres, um, Plumstead High Street and Wilton Road during April to October. Um, also, we've had additional resources to increase the task force teams by 50%, um, which help us to address fly tipping incidents in a more efficient and effective way. Importantly, we, and I've already alluded to this, we've been engaging positively with residents and businesses through a variety of means. Obviously, our social media channels are an obvious way that we've done that. But also, our waste advisors team have done a lot of face-to-face -face contact, engaging with residents wherever possible to try and encourage them in their behaviours around um, recycling and managing their waste um, appropriately. So that, that's um, a really important part of the work that we do. As well as... Um, Obviously, the, the, the challenges that we faced with our own policy um, locally, there's also um, the, the national waste poly policy environment is also changing. Most recently, we've had some more information around expectations around um, food waste collection. So obviously, that will um, continue to challenge uh, the service over coming years as well. But it's certainly a challenge that we're up for. And, and a challenge that we're, we're looking forward to working with, with um, councillors and residents and businesses to try and, and deliver the best services that we can. So, um, yeah, thank you for uh, listening to me. But if you have any questions, then we'd be very happy to take them. Yes, thank you, Kate, for your comprehensive uh, uh, information. I leave, leave it to the members. Yeah, Councillor Hartley. Thank you, Chair, um, and thank you for the introduction, and also thank you for the report, which is extremely clear and has really helped us get the data and kind of under the issue, so uh, grateful for that. Um, I've got a, a few questions. Um, if I might start the first on, um, miss, on missed bin collections, if I may. Um, so uh, on missed bin collections, um, you know, I think it's fair to say, you know, it's a huge programme of change as you say, towards zero waste. And I completely appreciate that the 
proportionally, these figures are very low in terms of misbidding collections. Um, data that I've got, um, I, I've been looking at um, for September of this year, so I'm looking at the chart 7.2.1. The, the actual kind of sheer numbers of missed bin collections in September 23 um, were very significantly higher if you look at actual numbers. So 137% increase in green, uh, sorry, 37% increase in green bins, 163% increase in blue bins being missed, and then a slight fall in black bins being missed, which, you know, it's a relief when they're being collected less frequently. Um, but can you just explain why blue bins are being missed proportionately more than others? That's the, the nub of the question. Sorry, thank you for the question, Councillor Hartley. Um, yeah, during the summer period, we obviously it's a big time of the year when lots of our staff want to take leave. Um, we, were, we secured some additional resources um, to help uh, enable our permanent staff to take annual leave during the summer period and we believe that some of our miscollections have resulted as a, as a consequence of enabling our experienced staff to take leave during that period and the agency staff that we took on that aren't so familiar with our rounds um, may be missing more bins than ordinarily would happen. Um, we tend agency staff, we've got more staff that work in the morning, so that's where we have our bigger group of people that would probably take more annual leave, so I, I think that that is probably the biggest con contribution to that. Um, yeah, on, on, on the PM, we had the biggest change with the rounds because they went from weekly to fortnightly, and obviously we, with round changes, properties, roads may get missed off around in that change in, in the system. Um, but luckily, as, they, as they've come up, we've got to the root of the problem and we've put those right. So we are now seeing, I, I can confidently say that they are starting to drop again. So, yeah. Thank you. Just two follow-ups to that. Thank you. Um, the, um, so that, that explains then there's more problems on the morning shift, hence the blue rounds suffering more yeah, blue, um, than blue black. Yeah, the collections happen in the morning. That's right. As to the green, yeah. Okay. Um, so on that then, uh, I suppose, you know, this is a session on service delivery, not policy. So I'm trying to stick to service delivery questions. But obviously the aim of the policy that you're implementing is all about increasing recycling. So you can see from the point of view of our residents, they're getting their black, you know, small numbers proportionally, but nonetheless hundreds uh, a month, are getting um, their black bin collected less frequently. And then in those cases, they're not getting their blue bin collected at all. And you can see how that creates a a high level of disappointment in the change. So could I ask what we're doing to tackle, to, to cope and mitigate the risk that that then drives the wrong behaviours in the future? You know, if people think, well, what's the point? I'm trying to recycle more and it's not getting collected. How do you then win the situation back in terms of communication with the residents? Yeah, thank you very much for your, your question, Councillor Hartley. I, I think the first thing to say is, um, you know, the fact that we are not even a, a full year into the service change, inevitably there are going to be some teething issues, which we've already alluded to. And obviously what that um, lived experience for the year allows us to do is to reflect on actually how do we need to make changes to ensure that we are getting, for example, better spread of, of annual leave uptake across the year, being much more proactive about ensuring uh, that colleagues, um, that, that, that only a certain optimum number can take leave at any given time, for example, because you're absolutely right. You know, we're already seeing there's positive news in there about our recycling rates, but we don't want to um, disenfranchise people for the reasons that you've said. So it really is taking the learning of this year, really understanding um, but ultimately, it is about having the right people out on the rounds at the right time um, with the right skills. And we obviously do a lot of work, um, Lee um, and, and colleague James particularly as our assistant managers in that space, making sure that we're regularly engaging with our crews so that they understand what's expected of them, that we identify problems early, encourage that two-way dialogue. Uh, it's not just about us dictating on high because, you know, our colleagues on the front line, they know better than us what the issues are, what the challenges are. So we're confident that that, that situation with the blue and greens in the morning will really start to, to, to improve, and, and it's already showing signs of that. 
That's great, and I'm taking from the report a high level of confidence that the problem is being resolved, and you know, so I take that point. I, but on the, on the experience, the, the resident experience, I've not had, my, my, my bins have been collected now fortnightly after all these years. I've tried to recycle more, it's been missed, and you as a service know that that route has had a problem. What do we, do we do anything to communicate with the residents to say, look, this is a problem, we missed the route. Do we apologise, is, I guess, is the, is the question I'm asking. Uh, yes, very much so. As, as soon as um, an issue comes to our, our attention, it, it very much gets fed into the operational sort of the supervisor, assistant manager, so that they are the, the leaders responsible for the frontline team so that they can get a real sense of what's happened from our perspective. But the expectation is absolutely if, if, if we've let a, a resident down that we will contact them to do exactly that. We'll arrange to meet them out on site, which we do regularly as well, because it's really important that if we've got something wrong that we put our hands up and apologise, but also that we try and avoid any repetition of issues, because uh, exactly. absolutely it's frustrating. Because this is all about behaviour change. And final, final thing, Chair, if I may, apologies. Um, individual apologies, fine, but if a route's been missed, do we put something through letterboxes for that street saying, look, we missed this time? Because I, you know, the, the casework that I get is you know, possibly sometimes the same street getting missed several times. And I think there must be a point at which we have, a, we issue a wider communication to residents. And maybe if that's something we might consider, I'd be grateful. Yeah, I think, I think that that's certainly something that we can consider. Thank you. Uh, just going back on what uh, Councillor Hartley has just said, we don't want our residents to feel, what's the point? And can I suggest that I know you use the word proactively there when you are making your statement. Can I suggest that we work with um, the HR to plan holiday because we know most of your period that you miss is between the holiday period, August to October. So if people can book their holiday in advance, for example, where I work by April, May, June, if you want to have holiday certain time, the store manager or the management team knows about it, and then we can plan to secure some other people who can come in during that period. So if it's something that you can look into, that would be great, and thank you for that. Um, any other? Yes, Councillor uh, Flesher. Thanks, Chair. Thanks for the, the report and the introduction. Just a couple of questions. Do you want them one at a time, or should I just ask you all at once? Yeah, go for it, yeah, yeah. Okay, the one I was going to ask about was the uh, weed spray, and I'm getting lots of complaints from residents about glyphosate, so I'm not sure what chemical we use now. Are we looking at uh, changing chemicals, or if we are, are we going to let residents know that we're going to a more greener weed spray, or is that at the question, because new, new chemicals don't work as effectively as glyphosate? Um, the other one was, I was going to have a quick question on fly tips, um, looking at the budget. Um, are they decreasing now then? And do you think we spend enough money resourcing fly tipping and catching fly tippers? And the final question was on the budget on the street services for 23, 24. If I'm reading this right, it's been a few years since I've done a council budget. Is that a £350,000 underspend you're projecting at the end of the financial year. And that's it. That was easy, wasn't it? Um, thank you very much, Councillor. So I'm going to take the first question and then I'll hand over to Ollie and Joe on your follow-up questions as well. Um, yeah, weed spraying uh, glyphosate. We currently use a contractor to do three weed sprays a year, albeit in the period, obviously, for, for this particular scrutiny, we did two sprays. Um, as it stands, glyphosate weed killer um, is still... Um, sort of certified safe to use as long as we follow the right um, processes and use it in the right sort of diluted state, etc. But there is a lot of noise around it. Some local authorities have chosen to either completely 
um, eradicate the use of, of glyphosate or to seriously limit its usage. Um, so what we're doing at the moment, there's a number of things that we're doing, um, not only in street services, but obviously the other departments that use it are parks and, and, and estates as well. But in terms of our, you know, in street services, we use it on pavements and, and paths. Um, so um, we're at the current time continuing to use glyphosate weed killer in those spaces, but in our parks um, and open spaces, we've actually, we're trialing during 2023, 24, not using glyphosate and using hand tools and different methods, um, with the exception of invasive species like giant hogweed and Japanese knotweed, because um, that, that's the only way to get rid of them. Um, but it is a, a topic that I don't think is going to go away anytime soon, so we remain very open-minded to alternatives. But as it stands at the moment, glyphosate is still the most efficient, the most effective, the most cost-effective um, way to deal with weeds in the public realm. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Could, could you ask the contractor then to be more mindful? I know they can't watch all their operatives, but there was an incident in Blackheath Westcombe where he was on a 4 by 4 motorbike and he was bouncing up and down from the road onto the pavement and back down when kids were walking past but he was just like spraying everything I and mean, even people's feet <laughs> and around tree bases and all that which is why I got lots of complaints from residents about like the widespread use so if you could just ask the contract to be a bit more mindful of if you don't mind yeah thanks um, and absolutely councillor any um, reports where <coughs> people believe that it's not being applied properly absolutely we want to know about it lee who's um, sitting behind me now um, manages that relationship and and we do when we become aware of, of issues we will always take the time to to speak with the contractor to find out what's happening and absolutely to hold them to account to safe practices yes i've got a couple of questions if i may ask now uh, the first one is uh, regarding flight tipping and i know Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, so in terms of um, the, the questions on fly tipping, you asked about resourcing of yes, the fly tipping. Yes, yes. So we have four task force teams um, that are, are dedicated to um, dealing with fly tips um, in, in our, uh, the areas where we seem to get the most fly tipping. Uh, we also have a response team that um, responds to any fly tips that are raised across the rest of the borough. It normally comes through on Fix My Street um, and also on Whitespace, uh, which is our environmental management system. So we also have that team. Um, and we also have SATI's team of Enviro Crime Enforcement Officers who are very proactive um, in uh, if our crews because they always look for evidence and if we find that evidence it gets passed to SATI's team and, and they follow up um, where they can um, a lot a lot of our efforts around uh, we start around the engagement um, but we do get to the point where where we fine residents for, for fly tipping as well so we do do quite a bit of work in terms of dealing with fly tips and I think our, are our numbers decreasing at the moment they are aren't they so we, we did expect to see a slight increase as a result of towards zero waste. And as a result of that, we also employed um, an additional Enviro Crime Enforcement Officer just purely to support the um, towards zero waste related fly tipping. Um, that person is finished with us now. They finished in December. Um, and the results from his work, that was very much engagement based. And we found that um, our notices, our leaflets that we left with residents seem to work very effectively. And um, I don't think we got to the point of fining anybody during towards zero waste. Um, the issue is uh, with DPW uh, and Chief. Oh, there you go, two. Out of all, all of the uh, engagements that we had, so it was quite successful. Um, and then, <coughs> excuse me. Um, in terms of the budget at period seven, it was an overspend of 36,000, which was down on the, um, on the previous period due to reduced disposal costs. Does that answer your question? Good. 
Yes. Okay. Uh, I've, I've got three questions here at the moment. The number can go up. Uh, regarding flight tipping again, and as World Council we know, there are certain spots that in your world you know it's always flight tipping. Is there anything we can do differently to deter people? And I think in the past I have suggested if we can have a dummy um, camera to say this place is being recorded and whatever, maybe that will help. Because I know in my world that certain areas is every time, even the moment I report it, and you guys do your job, you take it off. The following day, when I'm going to the bus stop or somewhere else, I find another one there. So is there anything we can do differently to deter people? Uh, that's number one. The second question, before I give uh, time for my other counselor, is uh, regarding spraying. You know, in some some of your report, you said we are going to sweep 10 minutes morning on social date. We are going to do, you know, West Comp on social date. Is there anything we can do to publicize where they are spraying? You know, and what time did we do in that? Because I uh, personally had complaint from residents that it has not been done this year. No, last year, I mean. But that is not the point. The point is, if we know the schedule, and you know, if you are not there or your agent is not there, we can notify you. Thank you very much. Um, so, in terms of anything that we can do to deter people from flight tipping, um, Sati's team have a, uh, a number twelve. 13 CCTV cameras that they do deploy um, in hotspot areas um, and SATI has a, uh, a, a list of criteria. Um, obviously, we, we uh, do you want uh, to explain? Yeah, um, so, we have a small stock of deployable cameras um, which we do deploy where we're getting prolific flight in them. So, these are potentially in flight in the um, With cameras, um, they are try to mask out any windows within the software that operates the camera itself. So we have to do an assessment before we can say, right, we can deploy a camera at this location. And that always makes it quite challenging for us. Um, the other thing is, is that we have to also assess whether it's likely we're going to be able to identify an individual who's flighting. So for example, if it's a vehicle, that's, that's, that's quite straightforward because we would we would do a check on the vehicle number plate and we'd be able to identify who the person was driving the vehicle at the time of the offence. But where you've got an individual who's walking something to that location, it's a case of how do we identify that individual and do we have the resources to do door knocking exercises to try to identify that person. So there could be a poster saying you'll be prosecuted if you, you know, yeah. Early indication suggests that when we return to that location, those items have already been removed. For the first time, we've managed to get on this environmental plate the logo of the Met Police uh, and the Environment Agency as well. And we rolled that out about two months ago. And we've used it in certain areas. An early indication suggests that actually, when people know they fly it and they see the actual fly it has been possessed as a crime scene, they take their items back. So that's quite encouraging, and we'll be making use of that thoroughly. Thank you for your reply. Councillor Darson? Yeah, the second question was publicising uh, the days that we'll be weed spraying in, in residential roads. 
That isn't something that we do at the moment, but I'm sure that's something we can take away and consider. Um, the weather conditions do sort of determine a lot with weed spraying. So, you know, if it, if it rains, the guys won't go out and, and weed spray because there, there's, there's no point. So the schedules will be affected quite a bit um, during that weed spraying period, but I'm sure we can take that back and seriously consider um, some form of um, publicity for residents in terms of when they could expect a weed spray, even if it's in a window of time. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask you about the sickness absence, please. Um, there's obviously been a bit of a leap up in the sickness absence. Um, it's fairly high, I would suggest. Um, and also there's been quite an increase in sickness due to stress and depression. I wondered if you could just tell us if you've got any ideas why there's been this increase and what you're doing to try and combat it. Thank you. Um, some of the sickness that, that we have that, that's resulted in, in that um, increase is we have a number of staff that are off long-term sick. Um, so unfortunately, if they have, you know, if they're off with cancer and things like that, that they're going to be off for a while. Um, so that adds significantly to our, to our sickness absence. Um, we've had a significant increase in the colds and flu and those sorts of things as well. And I, I think that's because COVID has gone now um, and a lot of people were absent during COVID with that COVID sickness and now it's colds, colds and flu again. Um, and in terms of the mental health uh, and the stress and depression, um, we have um, mental health uh, champions um, within the depot and within our service that um, frontline staff can speak to. We're having a time to talk day down at Birchmere fairly soon, um, which will be open to all frontline staff um, as, as well. And obviously there's the council's employee assistance program, which w whenever we do, uh, when, when a member of staff rings up and that is their reason for absence, they're offered that immediately um, as, as part of that initial conversation. Um, and obviously we also have our referrals to occupational health. I mean, in your opinion, is there anything else that we could be looking to do to try and decrease the numbers of people who are absent due to sickness? The, the, the role, the, the work that we do, but by the nature of it, it's very physical. Um, we're, we're out in all weathers throughout the year. So um, we are we do expect a higher level of sickness. I think it's fair to say that we do expect a higher level of sickness than maybe people that, that are office-based um, for those very reasons. You know, injuries uh, add to sickness absence as well. Um, so I think we're always looking at ways that, you know, toolbox talks, additional training, um, retraining refreshers on the equipment that we use, um, yeah, we're, we're always open to, to new ideas. Staff come forward with issues, with ideas as well, sometimes for us to consider. Um, yeah. Um. Yeah, I think as well, um, we have a, an aging workforce as well, uh, which inevitably comes with, you know, particularly if it's manual frontline work as well, you know, wear and tear and the like. So I think we're always open to to different ways of, of trying to support colleagues through their physical and or mental health and well-being. Mindful that we're currently, you know, uh, cost of living um, pressures for, for people. So, you know, just the, not necessarily it being work-related stress, but just life stress and pressures. So we're always looking at ways that we can signpost people to support, you know, around money and you know, finances, those kinds of things as well. Um, we also work closely with the unions as well. Um, obviously, they're always very quick to raise issues if, if they believe that there to be a problem. Um, so we meet them on, the, on a monthly basis, and, and that's a forum where, yeah, very sort of plain talking, and uh, we will always look to work um, with them uh, where we can improve the um, situation for our, our workforce because without them, we can't, we can't provide the, the really important services to our, our residents and businesses. Thank you. Are you happy with your response? Or one more. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. 
It's kind of a follow-up, but not really. Um, last time we spoke, we talked about how difficult it could be for staff to take annual leave. Um, has there been any improvement in that, or is it still difficult? Or do you, th and do you think that's actually had a knock-on effect on the sickness, if, if it's difficult to take leave? I think f following the last meeting, uh, it was myself, Ollie, and, and Lee were at, at that meeting. Um, we've done a lot of work. We've uh, tried, we've been more proactive with the frontline staff in their requests for annual leave. The, the holiday periods, like half terms, um, Christmas, those sort of periods, are, the summer holidays, are when people really want to take their annual leave with their families. Uh, so we, we do spend a lot of time. We can only let a certain number of people off on, on, on any given day, otherwise we wouldn't get our services out, and obviously we, we need to empty people's bins every day. Or, um, so we, we now... If somebody's annual leave is rejected because the full allocation of annual leave is gone for that day or that week, then the supervisor gets the member of staff in. So we can't actually give you that period of time, but there's a whole week here if you want to take that as an alternative. So, yeah, we, we are extremely more proactive in, in that sense now. Yeah, and, and we had some additional resources as well that helped us over the summer period um, to purely for that reason, to enable us to let our permanent staff take their annual leave. We're in a much better position than we were the year before. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, a quick follow-up on sickness. Um, as Councillor Dow said, you know, the, the figures are really stark, and I think we all appreciate that they're going to be higher than for other um, parts of the workforce. But, but they are staggering. Uh, 18 uh, FTE days lost per FTA. That's nearly a month. Uh, per FTE. Um, so quick question, um, have we benchmarked that against other boroughs? And if, if we have, could that data be shared? And if not, could we, could we do a benchmarking exercise to see how we're doing compared to other boroughs? Um, yes, we, we have done benchmarking exercises and we're broadly in line with, um, with other boroughs that have um, an in-house frontline workforce. Um, we can uh, take that away and, and share some figures that, that we've obtained, you know, subject to them being happy to share them. Sure, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate the data. Um, and uh, the question I was going to ask firstly was about uh, leave, and it's kind of almost related point, really. Uh, it's specifically on street services. So I'm looking at table seven, the, the table at 7.4.1. This is street cleansing, sorry, street cleansing specifically. We're very far away from target on percentage of roads swept on the scheduled day and on litter and, um, uh, you know, those two categories in particular. Um, so, you know, 69%, 70% September, October against a target of 99%. And you've explained that part of that is annual leave build-up from the pandemic. I think I've got that right. So the question is, if that's in the report, the question is, when do you think the annual leave pandemic effect will kind of work its way out of the system. So what I'm driving at is when can we expect to see these rates go closer to target for street cleansing? So the annual leave rollover from the pandemic uh, should finish this year. And um, we, we're we actually doing a lot of work with our street cleansing teams to reset the standards uh, and to improve it performance. So, so we are having our crews in crew by crew basis, totally reset, resetting the standards. Lee is leading on this um, to, you know, we, we're literally going back to basics um, and we, we have some new supervisors within the service as well um, who are very proactive um, and they're very engaged in, in what we're doing. Um, and they will be out monitoring the performance of the crews as well. Um, so, yeah, I'm quite positive about the work that we're doing at the moment. The staff are really engaging with it as well. So we're hoping that these performance figures are going to improve significantly. Thank you. That's good to hear. I'm in the very south of the borough um, that Councillor Dows and I represent, you know, it's a big uh, sort of, there's a big perception that uh, the area is neglected from the council street cleansing service. And part of that is an, a perception around efficiency. And, and, you know, I think it's borne out by reality. 
And so my next question is, it's good to hear that there's back to basics. I think that's just what we need on the service. That's good to hear. The, the this question really is on optimizing the service. So a, a common complaint I get is, you know, um, the, the bins are emptied. Uh, the, street, the street is cleaned and then the bins are emptied, not, not the other way around. And it's a matching problem, isn't it? There's an algorithm I'm sure that you've got. Um, is that being looked at? Can we to do a better job of, of fitting these different services together so that residents don't get this sense that you know one part of the council is working against another part of the council. Um, absolutely, there is some significant work focusing on exactly that. How can we, you know, set ourselves to be as efficient as possible? And sequencing of work is absolutely critical for that, for example, yeah, ideally you wouldn't, you know, have your, your waste collections come after the street cleansing. So, uh, yeah, huge piece of work. Um, again, me um, driving that for us. And we're working at pace because we understand that if we don't set things up properly, then that will make it much harder to actually get the performance um, standards that we're after. So as well as the reset standards, it's also getting the right people in the right place at the right time, doing the right work which will, over the next coming months, we'll start to see that, those tangible improvements. And certainly if not, then we would really welcome councillors coming to us and, and sort of giving us some examples. But we also um, commit to getting out and about as well and seeing for ourselves as a leadership team where issues are. But we always welcome a heads up. Okay, that, look forward to seeing the results of that. And then just moving to the uh, street cleaning in the town centres, we're obviously uh, pleased about the return of pavement washing, jet washing in the town centres. I noticed in the report that actually in the end only one of the cycles were, was completed and it mentions uh, equipment reliability and trained staff availability um, and it's still based on an overtime model, um, the service. So um, two quick questions. The uh, equipment reliability, you know, is that an impact of the fact the jet washing machine was um, mothballed for three years, you know, uh, sitting idle? Is that, is that something we're concerned about? And secondly, can we please move away from overtime? Because it just f feels like an extremely expensive way to deliver this, uh, this reinstated service. The, the, the equipment reliability um, issue was, was, I think it's more a vehicle the vehicle that carries the equipment. So the, the equipment was, was fine. It was actually getting the, the equipment out. Um, and sorry, what was the second part of the question? Thank you, that's good to hear. Um, the second part was, can we move away from the overtime model to deliver the service more cost effectively? That is actually being considered in uh, what Kate alluded to earlier, the, the, the bit of work that we're doing, because yeah, it's not ideal Getting, you know, having to rely on staff to volunteer to do overtime to be able to do that function for us. Um, yeah, so we're looking to change that. Thank you. Uh, you are happy with the answers? Yeah, I could go on all night, but I, I won't try your patience anymore, Chair. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kotel, please. Oh, I'm fine. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm yeah. sorry. Yes, sir. Sorry, no, no. Um, thank you very much. Um, I said a, a few, I'll put, I'll put them together, but the, f the first one is really about the, sort of the new builds and new flats we've got going up, particularly around the river. Um, so one, one, one part of that, I think last year you sort of mentioned about the recycling and those flats isn't very high in just terms of being able to get that through. But so one is sort of do you feel you've got the resources to match the kind of increasing populations we've got in those areas? And two, where you've got sort of areas of flats that maybe got housing management companies or there's different sort of people involved, that how, how well do you feel like you can work, work with them or is, are there some, I don't know, so your reflections on, their, on that relationship really. And then um, just as a slightly non-numbers person, it would be great could, if we, could we slightly, could you talk us through the budget a little bit in terms of the different columns um, and what, what, they dif what they mean? Not all, not all the categories, but just the columns. Um, that would be great. Um, yeah, so, um, Flats remain an issue in terms of recycling performance. Um, it's still the, the same issues because it's very difficult to engage with individual residents. Obviously, we collect bins and we do not know who is recycling well and who is introducing contamination, etc., into the bins. So um, it's, um, it's quite uh, resource intensive to be able to try and communicate with residents also, there's, um, they might not necessarily 
um, uh, realise that they uh, are, are causing the issue. Um, in terms of the past year, our focus has not been as much on flats because of the major service change. However, as part of the um, reduction recycling plan, um, which was for two years from 2023 to 2025, um, so in the second year, which we're um, about to come into, um, we've committed to a number of actions to try and improve recycling in flats. Some of those including um, some kind of structural things, such as uh, kind of bin layouts, changing things, uh, our relationship with developers around, um, you know, the, you know, to make uh, bid stores more inviting, the, 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 the layout that the bins need to be in, so to encourage uh, recycling and to people to, that don't want to recycle, uh, then put their waste in residual bins because it's the first bins they come to, things such as that. Um, and also in terms of um, improving um, communication um, with uh, flatted properties, but it, it is something that um, that we will be continuing to look at as part of the future kind of waste strategy, um, which will be due after 2025, um, because we we do appreciate that flatted <coughs> properties make up a, you know a very large proportion of our borough and an increasing proportion of our borough. And it is something that needs to, to be tackled if we are going to, you know, continue to improve our recycling rates. And I think it's important to say as well, the uh, recycling from flats or communal recycling isn't just a challenge in Greenwich, it's a national problem. So we share that same problem with other authorities and it's such a, it's a frustration for us as well because you do get some really, really good recycling and then you just take one person to put their food waste or whatever in that communal bin and and, and they've ruined, ruined the rest. So, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, in the relationship with housing management companies. Um, um, yes, yeah, so that, um, the, the relationship with housing management companies um, in, in terms of the, the larger housing management companies, there's generally more buy-in and a better relationship. Um, when it's uh, kind of smaller blocks with smaller management companies, it's often more difficult, uh, firstly, to find out who they are, because they, they can change quite regularly. So um, with smaller blocks, we tend to focus less with uh, the management companies and probably more with the residents that are uh, on site, um, but for, for large developments like uh, like the Arsenal, Greenwich Peninsula, etc., then we've got closer relationships with the, the managing agents. Um, and then I think you had a question about the budget. Yeah, no, just imagine that I'm quite like not being a bit basic with my numbers. Um, could you just, yeah, could you just talk through the different different columns um, in terms of what we're what we're looking at? And also, yeah. I just don't know what the word environment means either. Sure. So the, um, the 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 original budget is the budget at the start of the financial year. Environments um, are uh, uh, budget movements uh, in year uh, to create a revised budget at that period. Uh, the actuals uh, today is the um, the amount. Uh, I'm not an accountant, but I believe it's the amount that have been effectively paid, whilst the outturn is how much we're projecting uh, at the end of the year uh, based on that period. And obviously the, that outturn changed. And then the, the first column is the variance, is the, the difference between the outturn and the revised budget, which gives you the where you might be over and underspending, and then the the next column is the projected variance at the previous period. And then the final one is the change in variance to show what changes happen from one period to the next. Thank you very much. Thank you. Following up on that, does it mean that you will be uh, 104,000 surplus on commercial waste accounts? Uh, that is from the bottom one, two, three, four. It's showing that um, you are going to be 104,000 
surplus. So does that mean in April this year? Uh, no, so the 104,000 is the change in variance from one period, from period six to period seven. Okay. And that will have been because of income that's been um, obtained on the, the commercial waste accounts. Um, the, uh, the projected outturn is um, 80,000. So it's, um, it's not, not a surplus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My other question is, uh, which is not only with this borough, it's everywhere. Recruitment of drivers. And I know you've done your best in terms of, uh, uh, what's that called now? Uh, the one they do the training, you know, while they are working and they're still getting paid. Apprenticeship, thank you. And I know you've done your best on that. <coughs> However, it is difficult to recruit. So can you give us more details of what you can do again to attract uh, people, especially from BME community? Thank you. We're still doing our internal training of our um, existing staff. So we're offering training opportunities to um, staff that, that don't currently drive HGV, so they've got the opportunity to develop um, and uh, get the HGV qualification, which then enables them to apply for HGV driver roles um, and progress within the service. So we've had four drivers, this, uh, four members of staff, waste operatives or street cleansing operatives who have successfully completed the HGV tr driver training um, apprenticeship and will become HGV drivers within our service. Two have already and two are now going through that process which is really promising for us to see. It is um, a long process for them and um, they found it was quite drawn out and they would have rather had a condensed training period um, but unfortunately that's the way the apprenticeship worked at that time but we're going to look at trying to reduce that if we can so that they get through quicker. They were keen, really keen. Once they'd got their qualification, they wanted to drive. So um, the HGV driver isn't as much of an issue for, oh, I'm gonna touch wood when I say that, it isn't such an issue for us at this point in time. But we will continue with training and developing our own staff. Our adverts go out, um, when we do have vacancies, obviously we go through, the, we use the councils um, recruitment team to put to put those adverts out for us. Um, we share them with, with all communities. I also share our vacancies as they come up with Councillor Lacal, who I believe shares those those wider as well. Hopefully, you colleagues get get to see them and you can share them with your communities. Thank you. Is there any final burning question from members? I know. I've given you enough time, but go ahead for the last time. Just in exchange for my vote for making you chair of the meeting. Thank you. Um, one final question. Back to towards zero waste. Um, so the target for the, the whole point is to increase recycling behaviour change. The target was set at 5%. Appreciate that's a policy point. Um, I see that the year-on-year -year quarter one result was 5%. Um, but... It just, just seemed to me to be really low as a target. It's something the Overview and Scrutiny Committee have fed back in the terms of net zero. Bexley 40 something percent, Brom, uh, sorry, Bexley at 50 percent, Bromley at 40 something percent. Um, two, two, well, a two part question. Um, do we expect it to go beyond 5 percent from this point onwards? And secondly, why is the target so low, <laughs> do you think? Um, so I, um, I, I have a different view in that I don't think the target is that low because I think 5% is actually a very big change in terms of the amount of waste which is diverted from residual into recycling. Um, we've also got to remember that the change affected um, in the region of 70,000 households and not the 124,000 households that there are in the borough. 
Um, I think the comparison with Bromley and Bexley is not necessarily a, a, a fair one in the sense that they've got much lower levels of flattered accommodation, much levels of home ownership, and on average are more affluent, which is um, a, a kind of strong determinant of um, the amounts of recycling. Um, what we often see is that um, the, the most central a borough, the more difficult it is to uh, recycle. Generally also there is less garden waste being produced and as you get to the outer London boroughs you're getting a lot more garden waste which obviously drives up the recycling. So um, to get to a performance similar to Bromley or Bexley we would have to uh, increase our mixed dry recycling well in excess of Bexley or Bromley. Thank you. And how uh, far, the, the first part was, how far will it go? Do you expect it to exceed 5%? Um, uh, not, uh, no, I'm not. Um, in terms of the modelling, that is what we predicted and that's what we think will uh, occur. Um, if it goes uh, beyond that, obviously we'll, we'll be happy, but the modelling was, was very much 5%, so I wouldn't want to... Uh, to commit to, uh, to a higher recycling rate change. Thank you very much. Uh, final, final from I'm Councillor Just quickly following Fletcher. up on that. Thanks. Um, is it, is it only, are you only allowed to put out the green bin, the green bin, or can you attach brand sacks, or is that classed as residual? Because a lot of residents don't know about it. But the residents I speak to, they always say, oh, I've got all this garden waste, but I've only got the one bin. Or so, well, have, you got, have you ordered any brand sacks? I go, what brand sacks? Go, well, the council does, where you can order brand sacks and they will take it. But I wasn't too sure at the time whether that would be classed as residual waste and you would just empty the bin and leave it. No, they can put as many as they like out. Yeah. Is there any way we can advertise that we, a bit more? We have no um, restrictions on recycling, excess or side waste, in terms of recycling or garden food waste. It's purely the residual waste where we have the no side waste policy. Uh, thank you, Kate, and your team. Thank you very much for today. Uh, the next item is item number six, which the chair was meant to do, but I will start stepping on our behalf. Uh, if there's anything you want us to consider for the next uh, work program, I will advise that we send the email to the chair, the chair and uh, Samantha here, yeah? so that uh, we can plan. If there's anything specifically you need to bring out for the next uh, work program. So that leads me to item number seven. And then, looking at that, it looks like what we've got left for this municipal year are two items, which is the, the 14th of March and uh, April 2024. So, yeah, the next one, which is the March, the March one. Is there anything you want us to add or you want to ask regarding the March, uh, uh, March the 14th, which is going to be a uh, uh, environmental health divisional annual performance review, including the safe space and CCTV. Is there anything you or if you think about anything you want to add there or you want to ask, you can email the chair. And yeah, and I, I don't think there's any deadline to that. There will be, because I don't know if you can mention that. Mm. But I can send an email. Yeah, okay. Can you send, can I ask if you can send the email to members yeah. to say, yeah. Okay. Yes. And the last one, item number seven, yes. which is it now? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. it. Uh, thank you all for coming on this cold weather. Uh, go and have a cup of coffee and put your feet up and watch the telly. Thank you all for coming.
Thank you.